Good day, friends, and welcome to Pass It On, a Nice Nation talk show. Here on the show, we'll speak to the people who ultimately will speak with you to share insights to what they feel will help guide students or staff and or community personnel in the right journey of success. So join us here bi-weekly for the latest in criticism and discussion featuring the biggest relevant stories of our students, representatives, and teachers in our environment today. I'm your host, Andre Quattlebaum, better known as Coach Q. My guest today brings an enormous amount of experience in the marketing and managerial side of business. Her skill set in the restaurant and hospitality area has allowed this special person to build relationships and become an integral part of our community. She does an amazing job for coordinating of her company's public relation and events. It allows her to support disadvantaged, at risk, or in need families and individuals facing personal situations that are impacting their lives. For an example, homelessness, unemployed, underemployed, single mothers, addiction, and other uncompromising environments. The vision and integrity of this woman has brought us here today to discuss her company's motto, which is transforming lives and strengthening communities. She's joined today by the company's executive vice president and partner. It's an honor to have them both of these great people join us here today. We welcome Ms. Trudy Jones. Thank you. And Mr. Matt Larraway. How you doing today, sir? Good morning. Um, as I always say, let's get started. Time is money. Um, what is Craig CARES, which is your acronym is Chesapeake Regional Real Estate Group? What is that? Chesapeake Real Estate Group is a uh, regional uh, industrial real estate development company. Yes. So we build warehouses for you know, probably most notably Amazon and other you know, types of folks that okay. are distributing around the region. Craig Cares is, a, is the philanthropic arm of, of our company, which we started a couple of years ago. We actually changed the organization and crafted a position specifically for Trudy because we recognized it's, it's her heart and it's her strength to uh, really dive in to, okay. to needs of others. So we created a philanthropic arm of our, of our company specifically to focus on um, partnering with and coming alongside um, communities and schools. Right. We look at uh, we look at philanthropy a little bit different. It's more of coming alongside and partnering with folks rather than just giving to people. Absolutely. And uh, so that's that's what we've done in the last number of years. And then Trudy's leading that effort for us. Okay. Um, how long have you been in the community? We've been in Anne Arundel County. Um, our company has been around for 14 years, okay. always in Anne Arundel County. Right. Uh, the principals of the company have all been in Anne Arundel County for 25 plus years. Okay. Um, why was it important to partner uh, with our school? Uh, well, you know, as we know, the children of today are our future of tomorrow. Correct. Uh, and when our kids face adversities that are out of their control, such as um, you know, substance abuse, homelessness, poverty. It's our responsibility to lift them up and pull them out of those situations. Okay. Um, why was North County the right school to begin this partnership then? Um, well, North County, um, I feel, was the perfect fit for us, uh, and it's kind of a couple of different reasons, actually, kind of a synergy. And, First is that um, North County has some really great programs going on here. One notably is the STEM program. Very true. Very true. Uh, second is the uh, staff, the administrators here. Some have the most tenure of uh, some of the teachers in mm -hmm. the county and in the school system. And they are dedicated to the students and the families that are here in the school, uh, helping them to grow and thrive. So. And then, and then the most important thing, one of the notable things, is the Anne Arundel County Partnership for Children, Youth, and Families has done extensive uh, data and research on the demographics of the area surrounding North County and has uh, really kind of targeted this area, uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Brooklyn Park in my right, area. Brooklyn Park in, in, in notable. Uh, as, as one of the greatest areas in need. And of course, that has a lot of these students populating here in North County. You know, just to, to tag on to that a little bit, we also feel that it's important that we serve where we live and work. And Very we're, we're in um, Hanover, 
uh, we developed in and around in Arundel County and, and you know the, the actual mission statement of Craig Cares is serving northern Anne Arundel County and southern Baltimore City. So okay. you know being right on the line it's kind of really where we wanted to spend a good portion of our time. Have you, um, is North County the only school that you're beginning a partnership with? Is for schools uh, when you decided to um, branch out, was schools the most important thing that you wanted to get involved in, or were there, there other entities that was going to help facilitate what you were trying to do? Well, North County was the is the first school that we're partnering with, okay. uh, and a lot of that is um, in regard to our, our principal owner is uh, friends with uh, Mr. Dennis Sullivan, okay. who is key here at North County, yes. uh, and he has a lot of programs going on that, you know, kind of partner with it professionally as well with with our company okay. um, so North County was kind of like the perfect fit to get started right uh, but we do also do other activities with um, churches in the area in Brooklyn the Transformation Center is one of our is one of our key um, sponsors that we deal with okay and in that relationship um, what, are, what are they doing to help you guys and what are you doing to help them in the community that relationship with that, uh, you said the church and the Brooklyn Park mm -hmm. area. What are you guys doing with that? Yeah, so the Transformation Center is is uh, a group. It's it's uh, a ministry of Street Life Christian Fellowship in Baltimore City. Okay. And so they're at Fourth of Pontiac in, in Brooklyn, and um, they've got a food ministry uh, to supply food to the. I food noticed that on your website. I see you doing the website. Every, every Saturday, um, they supply food to a hundred plus families, uh, as well as clothing. Um, they've got a Celebrate Recovery ministry where they're dealing with uh, addiction, sort of any kind of hurt, hang up, and issue. Mm -hmm. um, every Thursday evening, um, you know, there's there's spiritual restoration. So it's it's kind of you know the Home Depot for for needs. Absolutely. And and so um, you know we've supported them and coming alongside different families to help them around the holidays that to, to help them all year long. Got you. Um, how long have you been working to ensure? that families have the basic necessities of life. And along with that, when, when did you decide that you wanted to do this for a living? Um, wow. Well, with, with Craig, I think we've been doing this for the past four or five years that we've been really making a conscious effort to help families in need. Um, I know every year we have we've have a, a family project, someone that we've come alongside and just helped. and. Um, so that's that's our passion. That's what we do. Um, you know, I mean, I foresee that you know we're only going to grow. It's only going to get bigger. We're only going to find more families and more people to help, and more schools and more churches, and and we're just really excited about that. Absolutely. Um, we like to expand upon that. Yeah. Well, so we we've, we've been coming alongside families for probably the last three or four years, and it it, it started out mostly being uh, around the holidays. Correct. And. You know, we've been really busy in the real estate world, right, because the economy has been growing, so we've been busy. Uh, we feel that we've been put in a blessed position. It's only been for the last year that we decided we were going to allocate a specific portion of our company, portion of our corporate revenue, and create a position to do this okay. as a, I mean, this is Trudy's full-time role in our company now is to, you know, help us facilitate. Um, How do you meet? Come on alongside folks. Well, um, we met. Prior, we, we ended up working together, but it was kind of a, we knew each other prior to that. Okay. Um, we, we attended the same church okay. uh, in Baltimore City. And just, you know, by, you know, probably a God thing, but by uh, coincidence, we ended up at the same company. Well, and, and that's the, um, I guess that's the, the, as you said, the God factor. You were destined to meet each other. Yeah. Uh, you were destined to uh, help you know, so I guess from that religious aspect, you know, the Lord always knows who, how to right. put mm -hmm. people who wants to do his work um, in the same type of places. Um, how can Ms. Manning's shared program help you guys in getting more involved in the communities? I, you know, I wish every school had a Ms. Manning. You know, <laughs> she, is, she is just amazing. Uh, and just her passion and her love for the students and just wanting to help them and and just you know she is just uh, she is uh, truly an inspiration uh, so you know we are just excited to to help support her and just 
tenfold all of her efforts. I mean, I'm excited to see what she has next. I mean, the holidays, this is the beginning of our partnership. This is the beginning of our partnership. Right. So we are just, we're just thrilled. So uh, you're absolutely right. She, she definitely is a tirelessly uh, worker. Uh, unfortunately, she has some other things to do. Uh, she couldn't meet this uh, deadline as far as coming on to the show. But we would definitely give her kudos for uh, mm -hmm. being in partnership with you guys. Uh, again, she definitely works tirelessly. The shared program, uh, since I've been here, has just been a uh, holiday thing. Uh, the Thanksgiving shared program, the Christmas shared program. Uh, is it something outside of the holidays that you guys want to do more when you're doing this partnership? Or is it just geared towards just the holiday season? Because as you know, kids don't just need things throughout mm -hmm. holidays. They need things pretty much probably 24-7, especially with the the homelessness and uh, the addiction problems and things of that nature that we're having. Well, I, you know, I mean, our goal is to not just be a hit one on, you know, for the holidays or for this or that. We're here for um, families that have specific needs. If there's a family in crisis, we want to try to help. I mean, if there's something that, that Craig Cares can do to help that family, lift them out of their situation, that's our goal. I mean, that's the whole whole purpose of our relationship I believe absolutely the, the, ho the holidays is the easy part right everybody feels generous and gets generous around the holidays and when somebody's seeking resources it's really easy to go ask for it at the holidays right uh, but I think the important thing is is developing a partnership and relationship and working relationships so that it's something that's ongoing year-round and mm -hmm. you know hopefully it's something that that goes beyond my time at Chesapeake real estate group or Trudy's time at Chesapeake real estate group or, or, you know, the, a lot of the people's time here in North right. County. So. Exactly. Um, how many kids or how many families do you guys believe that you're um, helping and is benefiting from uh, you guys' mm -hmm. admirable work? Well, uh, just our recent effort, we helped over 125 families last weekend, just won our uh, sponsorship with the Transformation Center. Uh, but that's an ongoing thing. I mean, because we provide support to them throughout the year. Right. So, I mean, it, that would be. What are some of the things that you're uh, um, helping them or supporting with? Is it just food and clothing? Or are you doing other things uh, for them? Are you adopting a particular family and making sure they're paying for uh, housing and things of that nature? What are you actually doing when you actually work with these 120 different families? So the specific numbers Trudy just spoke about is we, we assisted them with a with a Christmas and, and again right now because it's the holidays this was holiday specific we assisted them with a with a toy drive in a Christmas store and the whole concept there is is to provide as many uh, toys and and opportunities for parents to come in and purchase gifts for their children because you know similarly we don't want it to be we don't want to take the respect of of everybody having the opportunity to take their money, select the toy that they want for their child to give to them on Christmas. Correct. So what we did is we went out and we bought about 1,100 toys total amongst a two-week program. And that was not just us, but us and some other organizations that were partnering. And we provided all those toys at $2. And this was a Street Lake really? Christian Fellowship, okay. uh, Street Lake Christian Fellowship Ministry that we helped support. And so people could come in, they could come in one time, and they could shop for their families. And so, you know, the concept there is just to sort of not not give a person a toy that they don't necessarily want or get to pick but allow them to come in and pick something that they want for their children that they can then go on christmas morning and say i bought this one. absolutely make sure you have batteries though <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to go out that morning okay. and stay around the christmas tree and, and this evening uh we're, we're sponsoring a uh, wood street like christian fellowship and the transformation center we're sponsoring a christmas dinner Really, um, and I believe they've given out about 200 tickets to that, and and so there's 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 two ways that we kind of support the families in that general neighborhood, and one of them is uh, for people that have places to cook their own meals, we would supply them with Thanksgiving right meals and all the fixings. Okay, for people that cannot, don't have a place to cook, cook. Um, they're they're having a dinner um, this evening on premise. Where? Where's this going to be at? This is uh, at Fourth and Pontiac in in, in Brooklyn. Okay. Oh, that's, uh, so you're expecting how many for status concerned as you have? You have a guesstimation? I believe 200 to 225 people. Okay, that's outstanding. Okay, because you're absolutely right. 
not only just the giving piece of it, but also the people who are you may be giving food to who really don't have a place to be able to provide that food or a house or apartment, things of that nature. So giving them an outlet to be able to do that is uh, once again outstanding on you guys part. Um, when did you guys know that you wanted to invest into and around the community? Is it because your uh, company is housed in Anne Arundel County, but you have a background in Baltimore City as far as your church and things of that nature. So when did you know that you wanted to invest your energy and efforts into helping out families in Anne Arundel County? Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I, I know like from uh, us being rooted in Anne Arundel County, I mean, obviously the, it makes sense to serve where you are, where Absolutely. you live. Uh, so, I mean, that was first and foremost, and the need is everywhere, but why not start right in your own backyard? Absolutely. Uh, and like I said, with the um, analysis and the data that we've received from Anne Arundel County, um, you know, there's, there's obviously need right here. So why not just partner with schools and different organizations where we can make the most impact? Okay. Uh, I think we feel that it's important to be a member of the community. I mean, we're not... Um, if somebody has a need outside of Anne Arundel County or Baltimore City that, that has proved to be a good need, we absolutely want to jump in and supply it. But we wanted to make sure we had a focus that sort of said, um, we, want, we want to know the people, we want to know the needs, we want to serve the needs, we want to be able to do it alongside people. Right. And it's just, you know, for us to, if, if, there's an, if, if there's a need in Puerto Rico, which there is right now, yeah, we're happy to jump in and help there too. But we had to make sure there was a focus to our effort, and we felt that being able to do it here locally was important. And also, I mean, you, you, you can take, uh, if you want to support and help out with Puerto Rico, you can utilize our school uh, to do different type of activities, to raise different type of funds to be able to expedite those things over to um, Puerto Rico and things of that nature. But just beginning, that yeah, I'm, I'm being honest. <laughs> I mean, it's just an idea as you're sitting here yeah. saying, because again, one of the things about developing a partnership is that it's unending. Right. You, uh, the means is unending, should I say. You never know what you can do right. in comparison to having kids help you facilitate other ways to help others who are unfortunate or misfortunate, things of that nature. And there are a lot of kids in our school, as I said, we have over 2,200 kids, that pretty much will, wouldn't mind because we have a, uh, an outstanding ESOL program and most of those kids come from that population. So I'm pretty sure they'll be willing exactly. to do different things and help out to facilitate being able to provide for their families and things of that nature. So this beginning partnership is unending. Who knows where it, it really can go Absolutely. and things of that nature. Um, is there a goal for this particular partnership with our school, though? Is it something that you really want to uh, accomplish uh, in this? Because I know it's probably what this is a month in as far as the partnership. What we say? I think, I or think our goal weeks. is just to continue to supplement and just you know magnify the efforts that are currently going on here, and to create new uh, a new opportunities that we could, just like you were just speaking about. Yes. You know, if the, if there's a new opportunity where we can find a different curve, that we can find something, a different way to reach out into the community and help different families, then that's that's our goal, I do believe, I think. Yeah, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel all the time, right? So we want to come alongside existing organizations or existing folks that already have great ideas and already doing great mm -hmm. things and supplement that. If we find um, areas that we don't feel are being served, sometimes we go ahead and create our own strategy and go serve that directly absolutely but we would love we would love nothing more than for miss manning to come to us and say hey we got something else going on are you guys willing to help and if we're and, and if we don't necessarily have the core capability at that time we probably know somebody that does that absolutely do. so that's the and i would say uh for my part i'm willing to do whatever you think needs to get done uh, i wouldn't mind helping and any regard to get that information out for you. That's what passing on is all about. Um, I'm connected to the community. Uh, some of my staff members are a part of the community and things of that nature. So uh, we will be more than willing to help facilitate whatever you think the need is and wherever capacity to where it's needed at. So you can always count on me to help and support and expedite uh, anything of that nature that you uh, want to be able to get out there. Um, what's the most important part of your job? Oh, wow. Um, I think the, the most important part of my job is just being able to um, express my 
you know, my, my heartfelt feelings, you know I mean? Just being able to come alongside of, of people and to feel the pain that they feel, to feel the, the trials and just to experience it because that gives me the compassion that I need to do my job to, right. to the fullest extent that I can. It's trickling in my mind, I want to get back on this, as far as, I think you guys are inventing the wheel. Uh, you're not uh, reestablishing the wheel because we've never had a partnership with the outside organization before that's in the community. So what we're doing now, or what you're doing with Ms. Manning and our school is the beginning. Okay, so you're inventing something for us and our community that we have not had before. It could be somewhere else, but I know as far as in our school, we haven't had uh, outside investors helping to help kids in our community and within our school. So from that regard, you guys are doing an outstanding thing. It's a great thing, it's a beginning thing, and hopefully it can continue forever as long as you guys are still employed with them. And even if it's not, even if you're not employed by them, having that partnership is the beginning mm -hmm. and it can be an ongoing thing. So again, from that standpoint, you know, you're absolutely right. Uh, as far as, but you're not reinventing the wheel. You're establishing the wheel with North County High School. What's the most important part of your job? Oh boy, um, I guess to create an environment in our company um, that, that an environment and culture that both our clients, investors, and employees are excited to be part of, which you know, so it allows us to, in our company, all the people that work in our company participated in all of these events mm -hmm. that you've been setting up. So. I think it's important that we have buy-in in our culture and that it's not just about making real estate deals. I mean, that's, uh, it's obviously important that we make successful ones so that we can continue to do this type of thing. Right. But we're trying to make it so that our investors, our employees, and all of our partners know that we're not just about the next real estate deal. Absolutely. And I, and I think that from this standpoint, you know, once again, to talk about that partnership, I, I, your owner has to be excited uh, about and other partners. Uh, and investors has to be excited to know that what you guys are doing in the community yeah. and building this mm -hmm. relationship because again it can go a long way you know and things of that nature uh, I'm gonna get you out of here I like to go through this 60 seconds of uh, Q&A to get to know you a little better and let my audience get to know who you are as well where's your hometown Baltimore hometown Boston Massachusetts Boston, I've been here for 15 years so are you a uh, New Englander or are you a Raven I'm a raven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Good answer. <laughs> a great answer. <laughs> uh, what three words best describe you? Passionate, driven, and caring. Caring. Uh, compassionate, organized, and controlling. Controlling, <laughs> okay. Uh, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> what's one thing you couldn't live without? family. My wife and children. Wife and children, family, okay. What's one food you cannot resist? Ice cream. Okay. Ice cream. <laughs> you scream ice cream. Ah. Uh, crab cakes. Crab <laughs> cakes, okay. Where's your favorite place to be? Favorite place to be? The beach. Beach. Home. Home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite thing to do? Bake. Bake. Outside of being with my family, my selfish thing that I like to do is play golf. Golf. Are okay. you good? No. Okay. <laughs> That's why you like to play. <laughs> Most golfers who love to play or can play don't like to play. Uh, where's the best? Where's the best place you travel? Best place I've traveled. Um, the Caribbean. Uh, Haiti. Haiti. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite movie or book? My favorite movie, I think, was Braveheart. Braveheart. Um, favorite book would be Man in the Mirror. Man in the Mirror. What would you do for a career if you wasn't doing this? Hmm. Um, I would be some type of maybe art teacher. Art teacher. I think I'd like to be full time. Uh, full time ministry. Full time ministry. Okay. Do you have a nickname? No. Yes. Hoover. Hoover. <laughs> Which, if you've ever seen uh, the movie, I'm dating myself. Yes, Animal House, the president of the fraternity. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most overused word or phrase? Okay. Okay. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Okay. 
What did you want to do when you were growing up? Teacher. Teacher. Ah, uh, business. Business. Yeah. Okay. Tell us something about you that may be surprising to us. Um, I have three grandchildren. Okay. Oh boy. Don't know. It's okay. I mean, it don't know. It's, it's, it's a Where tough question. Yeah. It's all good. You know, that's the point about. That's why I said 60 seconds of Q&A. <laughs> uh, but the most important thing that you're doing is, is you're helping our population and our community. Um, it's been great to meet you both and to understand that there are so many uh, things that's out here in our community that we just don't know a lot about. Uh, your organization was one of them. I'm glad that you guys were able to come on to pass it on and share your passion and your vision and this new partnership. On, it's unfortunate that we didn't have Ms. Manning here uh, with you, but the, the families that are going to be receiving these uh, donations and monetary support and things of nature, uh, let me say thank you on their behalf because a lot of times we tend not to share who's helping these individual kids, or we tend not to put them in a, in a situation to do that their peers may know that they're being right. helped in that magnitude, because again, we want to keep that uh, secrecy and that confidentiality piece of it. But the mere fact that you guys are doing that great work is going to go a long way. Uh, so once again, um, don't forget that if you ever need help, support, uh, more people to help join what you're doing, to getting out there in the community to help you do those things, you know, I'm more than receptive to do that. Just give me a shout out. Uh, if there's things that you have that's coming down the pipeline that you want to get out and about, you know, let pass it on know, and we'll pretty much expedite that information out there for you and things of that nature. So uh, again, want to thank you for thank coming onto the show and spreading that information out. I think that nature, if you want to say thank, something. Yeah, no, I, uh, I do because uh, something that somebody doesn't know about me, I kind of want to encourage some folks here is that I actually years ago suffered with substance abuse and addiction. Oh. And, you know, you look at, you, you think that somebody that's an executive vice president or owner of a real estate company probably didn't have a past or some issues. I want to encourage people that, you know, through support of other people, um, you know, through faith, through other things, you know, hang in there. And Absolutely. You, you couldn't have said it no better because just because you're in the position that you're in now doesn't mean that you, I always tell people that you have to go through things to grow from things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you don't go through it, then you can't grow from it. And things like that. So what you just said uh, validates that particular uh, aspect of it. And the families that you're serving is going through something and they're gonna grow through that something based upon your facilitating and your help as well. So uh, we like to say here on Pass It On, happy holidays to you. Uh, you heard it from Mr. Matt Laraway and Ms. Trudy Jones. They're re representatives from the Chesapeake Real Estate Group and they have just begun a partnership with North County High School in our shared program. So as you see and if you've heard, these uh, admiral people are willing to donate their time and invest it within our community. So we want to say happy holidays to them as well, and we'll see you guys on the next uh, year. Happy holidays. Talk to you okay. later.